It is a typical day for the team of Teddy Greens, a non-profit organization that works across several platforms as a forerunner in protecting and preserving our common environment. Today they have set out to follow up on complaints registered by residents living near a dump site at Burari, similar to the one at the Balswa landfill a few kilometers away, about an hour from Connaught Place at the heart of the capital. There is an air of concern and urgency amongst the volunteers. Is this dump site legal? How much of a health hazard has it already posed for the people living around it? While taking notes, photo documenting important evidence and talking to as many parties as possible, the Delhi Greens blog team, the Vigilante branch, seems to have stumbled upon a piece of information that has suddenly slipped in a positive spin on the issue of landfills and waste. We found out that this is a project of the MCD uh, where they're trying to recycle the uh, construction and demolition waste that they've uh, gathered from around this North Delhi area. So we think that I mean, it's a good solution that they've figured for the problem. But we, what we're really concerned about is the way they're handling it. Because the amount of dust that is there around this area is actually a hazard for the people who are living nearby and even the passers-by who are passing on these roads. This construction and demolition waste recycling plant in Burari has all the right intentions. It is trying to set the wheels in motion for a system that will keep the CND waste of North Delhi from being dumped into the Yamuna or the Bergeroni landfills of the capital. But for now, the complaints and confusion it has created among the residents of the area are as real as they are valid. Kansam Nirmala Devi is a core team member of the Delhi Greens blog, a flagship project of the Delhi Greens organization initiated in 2007. DG blog is an information portal and a watchdog of sorts for everything related to green news, events and activities in Delhi NCR. It all began with Dr. Govind Singh taking to writing blogs every time he stumbled upon an environmental issue of pertinence. The first blog post was published in March 2007. And then throughout April, we published a lot of interesting stories, you know, gathered momentum, etc. Uh, I remember there was a, a common palm civet that had been spotted in JNU. So there was a friend of ours who spotted it there, a senior professor. And he shared the photograph with us over email. And then we immediately asked, uh, took his permission and posted it on the blog, saying, look, a common palm civet spotted in Delhi. And then uh, at Yamuna Biodiversity Park, Dr. Fayaz Khutsar picked up, found a uh, snake, and he shared a, just for uh, information and for you know the fact that you know how the park was doing well, he shared that photograph with us, and we immediately took his permission and then published it on the blog, saying, look, this is what Delhi is all about. It's not just you know, it's also got its biodiversity. It's not just people. It's also had its biodiversity alive. But the turning point for the blog was when it made the shift from being a portal that celebrated the sprawling greens of the city to transforming into a platform for campaign. One fine day we were walking back to our university from the fieldwork and we found that all the trees in the university area had been numbered. And they were also numbered in a very brutal manner. So this, the bark, lower bark had been scraped off and a number had been written on all the trees. Each tree had a unique number of course. So we went to various offices of the university to find out what's happening. And then somebody said, uh, we don't know who's done this, uh, but uh, we are, I mean, uh, it is a given knowledge that each time they number trees, they will probably fell them later. So then we figured that, you know, they'll probably be felled. And then we went to find out that which is the biggest number, and we found it was 1,000. It shocked us that probably 1,000 trees are about to be felled in, the, in a university which we call our own, you know, and it's, it's, it's a place where we've grown up, we've learned so much. So we thought, we took it out to ourselves, that these are our trees, you know, we've been in their environment, we've benefited from them and now they're asking for our help. So we must work to protect these trees. And then we shifted our focus in the blog from celebrating Delhi to actually initiating a campaign uh, to protect these trees in the University of Delhi. The blog's report about the unscientific marking and felling of trees was picked up by the mainstream media. 
and led the Vice Chancellor of the University of Delhi to intervene and ensure that no such unscientific markings took place again. This is a recent uh, Wetlands Day celebration that we the Yamuna and its upkeep forms a substantial part of their discourse. While campaigning for it once and noticing a dismal turnout, they immediately realized the problem. As the capital of the country and the city with the highest per capita income, Delhi is set to attract the largest share of migrant population in India. In 2016, Delhi's population was set to grow by almost 1,000 a day, of which 300 came from other states. A situation that would invariably give rise to the problem of stakeholdership. A problem that led Delhi Greens to embark on their most unique project. So we went around the city of Delhi in the different market areas, in the metro stations, etc. And we asked the people only one question, where are you from? And uh, you'd be surprised to know that more than 85% of the people took a name of a city other than Delhi. So they said uh, we are from all the different cities that you can think of in India and some even abroad, they were from there. So we said okay and then we uh, asked some of them that how long have you been living in Delhi? And some of them have been staying in Delhi for 20 plus years or longer maybe. But they're still connected to the place where they came from and not to Delhi per se. And that is uh, when we realized what had happened wrong with our campaign. It was a campaign that failed, why? Because the city does not have a stakeholder. Now, Delhi is facing an urban stakeholder crisis. And after a lot of discussions, we uh, put together a campaign, a project actually, called the Urban Ecotourism Project. And the objective of this Urban Ecotourism Project is to take people who are living in Delhi for 20, 30, 40 years and take them on this urban ecotourism experience, show them the very ecosystem services that support them, and convert them and transform them into citizens of Delhi. The Yamuna Biodiversity Park takes pride of place as one of the biggest draws of the Urban Eco Tour project. Located around the Yamuna riverfront and covering a magnificent 9,770 hectares, when chief scientist and principal creator Dr. Fayaz Khutsar took the decision to help revive it, the area was nothing more than barren land. Red snake. It is a rat snake. Recently somebody asked me that why, why during election and actually in manifesto no political party has put environment uh, as a priority. You have asked broad road, you have asked hospital, you have asked metro, government has given you everything. But you have not ever, never ever asked that you need a river with blue water. You need a river where dolphins should be jumping. You need a river where there are seven, eight species of turtles. You need a river with a lot of migratory birds. You never ask. So this park is a place where if people like Govind brings a lot of students and uh, other people from the society, they get to learn how to raise questions, how to frame questions, how to design a question, because questions become very important in your life. And in a scientific world also, when you design an experiment, you raise many, many questions and write it down. Based on their analysis, between 2017 and 18, the Delhi Greens blog received between 1.2 to 2.3 lakh unique visits per month, a formidable percentage. Although named Delhi Greens, it also has a nationwide readership and receives queries from all over the country. We used our uh, young boys in the society to teach the household, the ladies, how to, how to segregate and why to say. Apart from the urban eco-tours, which has seen around 1,200 citizens participate till date, the Delhi Youth Summits on Climate Change and the campaign to promote segregation and create zero-waste colonies like the one at the Oriental Apartments in Northwest Delhi's Rohini area are some of their current projects.
Delhi Greens, which played the role of advisor for the zero waste campaign at the Oriental Apartments, today uses the model to initiate conversation amongst resident welfare groups across the city. We would like to congratulate you for the work you are doing. And people are reading and this message is spreading. And people would like to replicate what you are doing. Okay, sir, who educated us? How to do? What to do? How to proceed? We are always on the lookout for those initiatives which work for effective waste management. And one such initiative that we found was scrapped. So the moment we heard that there was this one company which has set up in Rohini and is now already picked up one colony and has made that colony turn into a zero waste colony, the Oriental Apartments. So that was like music for our ears. So we picked up our cameras, we put our crew together. Delhi Greens draws its workforce from the youth of the city, who also work as interns in the organization. As a non-profit, the main sources of funding are donations from citizens and companies, workshop fees, advertisement revenue from the DG blog, consultation fees, and funds raised for individual projects. Delhi Greens had started as a cry to save the splendid greens of the city. As once pointed out by Nobel Peace Prize winner and environmental political activist, Professor Wangari Mutamathai in an inspirational speech. I have never been to a more green city. Today, a not so big yet determined team toils to serve as watchdogs and protect what's most precious in this big city.